This is CBC Vancouver News. And just for Visaki, just like just having this atmosphere around us and just like what it is, just like the birth of Khalsa and like our religion, that's an important thing for us. Canada's largest Visaki celebration drew people from around the world. We'll bring you the sights and sounds from Surrey and depletes the resources that we have that we can respond to those natural fires. These are all these are all preventable fires. Crews are battling an out of control wildfire in central BC. It's one of seven human caused blazes reported in the Caribou region in a single afternoon. Plus, instead of trying to put it in the landfill, we're going to see if we can give it a new life. Inspiring communities to become more eco conscious, how some in the province are marking Earth Day 2024. Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Janella Hamilton. Today, more than a half a million people flocked to Surrey for one of the largest Visaki processions in Canada. This year's event, a mixture of joy and reflection for some still seeking justice for the killing of a BC Sikh activist last June. As our Maurice Katz reports, the important religious celebration drew in people from around the world. <laughs> Vibrant colors and the smell of homemade food filled the streets of Surrey on Saturday. This is makiri roti and this sarsoka saag. Thousands of people gathering for Vaisakhi, some coming from thousands of kilometers away. I'm basically from India, Punjab. I feel like home. <laughs> this is pretty common in India. Organizers say Surrey's Vaisakhi celebration could be the largest in the world. Very, very pleasant time for me. First time I saw the Vaisakhi like in Surrey. The holy day marks the creation of the Order of the Khalsa in 1699. This year's procession, a mixture of reflection for some, following the killing of BC Sikh activist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. It's also a time to connect with faith. The festivities are rooted in the traditions of Seva and Langar, two significant aspects of Sikhism. You know, make stalls and then just giving free food to everyone. A chance for Surrey's growing Sikh diaspora to come together to celebrate the community and culture. I think it's a beautiful wow. thing that so much of our community has immigrated to this country and we can make such a loving environment here. Maurice Katz, CBC News, Surrey. Homicide investigators say a man charged with the murder of his wife in their Abbotsford home two years ago has pleaded guilty. In July 2022, Inderjeet Singh Sandhu was charged with first-degree murder in the death of 45-year-old Kamaljeet Kaur Sandhu. On Friday, he pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of second-degree murder in Abbotsford Supreme Court. The plea comes nearly two years after police found the victim with critical injuries in her home on Eastview Street. Sandhu's sentence sentencing date has yet to be set. Three men from the Lower Mainland who were caught poaching four years ago have now been hit with hefty fines and hunting bans by a Kamloops Provincial Court judge. The three men were pulled over for an inspection by a conservation officer in the North Thompson. The officer found two deer that had been shot out of season, including one that was pregnant with twins, as well as several grouse and marmot. Officers say the men also had loaded guns and open alcohol in the vehicle. I think what's really important is that, you know, the province of BC has a, a group of very devoted, hardworking officers that are out and about on the landscape looking for folks that are doing things like this wrong. And eventually, even though you may think you're remote, um, you will run into a game warden and you will have to face the music if you are breaking the law like these folks were. The judge issued one of the men an $8,000 fine, while the other two have been ordered to pay $5,000 each. All are banned from hunting for 10 years. Canadian immigration officials have halted the deportation of BC climate justice activist Zain Haq just two days before he was set to be sent back to Pakistan over claims he violated his study permit. The deportation order was issued on Thursday, but less than 24 hours later, Haq says the Canadian Border Services Agency informed him his deportation, which was sent for Sunday, had been cancelled. Haq, who has been unable to study or work since his study 
study permit was canceled in 2022, tells CBC News he is relieved. However, he says it is still unclear how long or under what terms he will be able to stay in Canada. Huck gained prominence for his climate activism work with Extinction Rebellion in Save Old Growth. Hundreds of people gathered around the Vancouver Art Gallery today for the 420 event instead of Sunset Beach. To dissuade the event from taking place at Sunset Beach, the Vancouver Park Board decided to temporarily close down some facilities. Vancouver police were on hand at the art gallery and say officers seized cannabis products from a vendor who refused to stop illegally selling at the event. The B.C. Wildfire Service says crews are battling an out-of-control wildfire in central B.C. It is one of seven human-caused blazes reported in the Caribou region in a single afternoon. It's a lot of wildfires to respond to at this point in time. Yeah, that's correct. And all of them, um, again, are human-caused. So um, that's, not, that's not what we want every time we have to respond to a human-caused wildfire, um, especially after a lightning bust. That depletes the resources that we have that we can respond to those natural fires. These are all these are all preventable fires. The Burgess Creek fire is approximately 50 hectares and is burning 50 kilometers south of Quinell. A thick plume of smoke can be seen from Quinell, Williams Lake and Highway 97C. BC Wildfire Service says no homes or buildings are threatened at this time. Crews will be working throughout the night to establish lines of control while temperatures are cooler and will re-evaluate their strategy in the morning. And on Vancouver Island, firefighters there are already responding to a number of brush fires. And I know Courtney Fire Department's responded to three or four grass fires already this year, so it's, it's, it's an ominous sign for the, what, what could be um, coming in the season ahead. The BC Wildfire Service says they are preparing for a busy summer ahead. Going through different scenarios they may encounter, including one where hydro and natural gas infrastructure is threatened by wildfire. If you look around, it, you can see it's quite easy that this infrastructure may be affected. And especially for the substation, there's a lot of dangers that the firefighters aren't normally ex um, exposed to. And of course, if we lost this infrastructure to repair it, would be significant delay of power to this area. Crews then moved into a residential area to practice structure protection. This weekend, events are being held across the Lower Mainland ahead of Earth Day on Monday. As Karis Hogg reports, the events serve as an opportunity to educate people about being more eco-conscious with the aim of bridging the gap between environmental knowledge and action. Surrounded by green space and nature, hundreds of people are marking Earth Day at this Mission Park. Mission is definitely um, a very outdoorsy town. The people here love to be outside, love to be a part of nature. There's a lot of community organizations. Actually, right behind me here, there's the BRIM Repair Cafe. And BRIM stands for Building Resilience in Mission. And the, this is a group of volunteers around the community that are really trying to, to make a difference. Like volunteer Eric Bierda. I am attempting to uh, fix this air fryer that was dropped off. Uh, somebody dropped it off and says that it doesn't turn on, so instead of trying to put it in the landfill, we're going to see if we can give it a new life. Using his skills to divert waste from the landfill. Today's culture seems to be throw away and buy a new one, so if we can give it another lease on life, that's great. Chef Rayanna Layfield says roughly half the food she eats is foraged from local forests. We can't legally forage in parks, but you can just leave your little city area or go into the forest on, on crown land and you can find yourself all sorts of vegetables and herbs on the ground. She offers tours to educate people on which plants are safe and how best to prepare them. Like fiddleheads that are unsafe to eat raw, but when cooked can be delicious and nutritious. 
I'm gonna put them into hot boiling water with salt for maybe 30 to 60 seconds. I'm gonna strain that out and then I'm just gonna saute it in some wild herb butter. Alexis Holmes makes clothing from reclaimed fabric. It's important for me to do this because I'm also helping divert waste from landfills. And then by doing all this, I've been able to create a zero waste system. So it's really challenging what we think is fashion and how, like, I guess the whole system as a whole works. Dolman hopes events like this spread awareness about the simple ways people can make conscious choices to help protect the planet. Because really, at the end of the day, um, it's really a community effort. Karis Hawk, CBC News, Mission. To the latest now on an orca calf trapped in a lagoon off northern Vancouver Island. The Federal Fisheries Department says it has been feeding seal to the killer whale as part of the rescue effort, but is reminding the public it is illegal to feed marine mammals otherwise. The department says the decision to use seal may meat was made after consultations with marine mammal experts. It's good news for rescuers who will now have a bit more time to try to get the orca out of the lagoon where she's been for more than a month after her mother died after getting trapped on a beach during low tide. A team of more than 50 people tried to rescue the calf last Friday but were unsuccessful. More than a thousand people gathered to watch the spring turnout at Kootenay Meadows Dairy Farm near Creston. The farm's dairy cows spend the winters indoors to protect the soil and their feet, but come springtime, the cows return to their pasture. As our Corey Bullock reports, the amusing event also raises money for the community. <laughs> What started as a neighborhood gathering has turned into a grand tradition for the small community of Lister. It was something that we used to always love as a family, so we started to invite a couple neighbors and just like let them know when we were going to do it. And then we actually met a Danish dairy farmer, and in Denmark all the organic farms let their cows out the same day. So we thought that was just such a great idea to do it as an event. This is the eighth year for the spring turnout. And every year, people from across the region flock to Lister to watch the cows kick up their feet. It's just so emotional, like sharing this. The, it's like pure joy. I mean, watching the cows leaping and jumping. There was this calf that um, I touched its nose and it started licking me. Kootenay Meadows is a family-run dairy farm. They produce milk products and cheese and are currently milking 130 cows. We try and do everything as closed loop as possible. So we, we grow about 95% of our own feed and that's all within about a five mile radius of the farm. Try and minimize the externalities and environmental impact of our farm as much as we can and just be hopefully a good part of our community. Harris says that in Lister, the soil is made of heavy clay. And when it's wet, the cows can destroy the ecosystem that Kootenay Meadows works hard to keep. It's also tough on their feet. If they're walking on frozen, like pocked up clay, they'll start to bruise their soles and cut in between their toes and stuff. So it's, it's partially for the soil and partially for the cow's health. Besides being a stomping good time, the spring turnout is also a fundraiser for the Lister Community Association, which takes care of Lister Park, a neighbor to Kootenay Meadows. I love Creston and I love the Kootenays, but I'm really proud of Lister and to be from Lister. So it's an important thing for us. A community that's truly welcoming spring with bells on. Corey Bullock, CBC News. Cranbrook. And here's another sure sign it's spring. A pair of well-known grizzly bears have emerged from hibernation. Grinder and Kula appeared yesterday at Grouse Mountain in North Vancouver. They have been in winter dormancy for almost five months. The grizzlies first came to the area in 2001 when they were rescued after being orphaned. Wildlife officials say the bears are two of the most popular residents at Grouse Mountain. A massive U.S. aid package for Ukraine looks likely after months of political wrangling. The reason for the holdup after the break.
An explosive fire has been extinguished in Happy Valley Goose Bay, Newfoundland in Labrador, but many questions remain. The CBC's Heidi Adder has more. Keith and Monica Legg are back home, resting with their six dogs. The couple was evacuated last night as a fire decimated a former ceramic shop and airport control tower before lighting an airport hangar ablaze. The hangar is where liquid oxygen was being stored. The town declared a state of emergency, evacuating people, businesses and the local animal shelter. There's uh, three large liquid oxygen tanks on the other side of that hangar that you can't see uh, in behind me. Um, we just pulled back, we pulled back to, uh, back to the, uh, the curling club and Circle went back to their uh, fire hall as well. So it was life over limb and uh, we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't come back to battle the fire until there was no more risk. Explosions were heard throughout the community into the early hours of the morning until crews could get back to work. Butler says about 35 to 40 people were involved in fighting the blaze. Today's smoke is still rising from the wreck as the wind fans some remaining embers. But RCMP say there's no further risk of explosions, meaning people and pets could return. It's good news for the Happy Valley Goose Bay SPCA. Their animals were taken to the local clinic, the town pound and a foster home. But a number of community members reached out offering help. And we know we have support out there. We know we have lots of people out there, you know, willing to help whenever. But when something like this happens, you really see the numbers that are really out there and, and people wanting to help and do anything they absolutely can to, to help in an emergency situation like this. This morning, staff are grateful to only have minor cleanup at the shelter that's regularly at full capacity. Just south of the shelter, the former hangar is completely in ruins with twisted metal. The hangar and tower were built in the late 1940s when this town was first developing. They were a piece of local history. There's a lot of people that passed through that airport coming to Goose Bay. A lot of history. Yeah, that came to Goose Bay. All gone. The building the fire started in has been long abandoned. The fire chief says there's no word yet on the cause, but an investigation is underway. Heidi Adder, CBC News, Happy Valley, Goose Bay. Today marks 25 years since one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history, the attack at Columbine High School in Colorado. Twelve students and a teacher were killed and 21 others injured. The two shooters started outside, then moved to the library. They also brought explosives, but those failed to detonate. Less than an hour after the first shots, they turned the guns on themselves. They were 17 and 18, weeks shy of their graduation. The man who set himself on fire yesterday outside the venue of Donald Trump's latest trial has died. Authorities made the announcement early this morning. Officials believe he was acting on conspiracy theories but did not appear to be targeting Trump or anyone else involved in the trial. An online manifesto critical of politicians did not single out Trump in particular. It's been months in the making, but a U.S. aid package for Ukraine finally looks likely. It passed in the U.S. House of Representatives today. And as the CBC's Sasha Petrasik takes a look at what's behind the holdup and why the move comes at a critical juncture during Ukraine's fight against Russia. The bill is passed. With that, Democrats and Republicans overwhelmingly approved $61 billion in aid to Ukraine the most contentious part of a complicated U.S. package of bills that took months to pass in the U.S. House of Representatives. Pushed through by Republican Speaker Mike Johnson, who was still arguing with some in his own party after the vote about what's at stake. It's a dangerous time. Uh, three of our primary adversaries, Russia and Iran and China, are working together, and they're being aggressors around the globe. The bills also include 8 billion U.S. dollars for Taiwan and 26 billion for Israel, whose support rose this week after it was targeted by Iran. For Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, this is a lifeline, which he immediately acknowledged with, thank you, America. Speaker Michael Johnson, I thank all American hearts who, like us, feel that Russian evil must not win, he says. 
Over the past weeks, the prospect of a Russian military victory seemed more likely as Ukraine ran low on ammunition and struggled to repel Russian drones and missiles, pleading for the kind of air defenses that protect Israel. But the debate was bogged down by a split among Republicans. Supporters of Donald Trump, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, calling today's vote a sellout. When we had members of Congress in there waving the Ukrainian flag on the United States House of Representatives floor, um, while we're doing nothing to secure our border, I think every American in this country should, should be furious. She's part of a faction trying to oust Johnson, who succeeded in rallying conservative hawks for the vote to pass. Our standing in the world is at stake with our vote today. The bills now go to the Senate, where majority Democrats are likely to pass them quickly. As for the White House, it says it's ready to ship Ukraine's military hardware right away. Sasha Petrosik, CBC News, Washington. Here we have a time lapse overlooking Burrard Inlet from earlier this evening. When we come back, what the Canucks playoffs journey means for Metro Vancouver businesses. Hi, I'm Amy Bell, and here's what's in your CBC Vancouver inbox. 
On May 9th, join CBC Vancouver's Dan Burrett at the Surrey Board of Trade's Top 25 Under 25 Awards, celebrating the incredible initiatives of Surrey's youth. And CBC Vancouver is the exclusive media partner of the DOXA Documentary Film Festival, May 2nd to 12th. Enjoy thoughtful and engaging documentaries, special presentations, and industry events. For festival information, visit doxafestival.ca. Fortnite, a new track and music video released by Taylor Swift. It's the lead single from her latest album, The Tortured Poets Department, and it features rapper Post Malone. The black and white music video also has cameos from actors Ethan Hawke and Josh Charles. Swift surprised her fans by releasing a double album with a total of 31 tracks. The Vancouver Canucks playoff journey starts tomorrow. The Greater Vancouver Board of Trade says increased pedestrian traffic from the playoffs is good news for businesses that have yet to fully recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. It's great news when we have more people coming downtown at a time when restaurants are really suffering. Game one of the series against Nashville begins at 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Rogers Arena. The city of Vancouver is reminding those who attend the games there will be a number of road closures which are expected to cause traffic disruptions for anyone traveling in and out of downtown. The city says taking transit, walking or cycling will be your best options. The Vancouver Police Department says additional officers will be deployed throughout the city on game days. And a reminder, tomorrow morning is the 40th annual Sun Run with a number of road closures, so make sure you check that before you head out as well tomorrow morning. And that is your late news for this Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. For news at any hour, you can always head to our website at cbc.ca slash bc. Have a great night.